this morning go to 1 Samuel in chapter number 1. 1 Samuel in chapter number 1. I want to read a couple of verses of scripture to you. Uh, a couple out of 1 Samuel chapter 1 and then a couple out of 1 Samuel chapter number 2. We'll be preaching through these chapters this morning, chapter 1 and chapter 2. And uh, I believe we've got something to say to you this morning that I believe will be a help and a blessing to you. If you'll grab a hold of it and take knowledge of it, I believe it can be a help to us. 1 Samuel chapter number 1, those of you who have been around here any length of time at all know my favorite books of the Bible, the book of 1 Samuel. love this book. I've preached a lot out of these chapters, but never necessarily um, in this way or on this vein or thought that I'll be preaching this morning. And that's another thing I love about my Bible this morning. It don't matter how many times you've read it, and I can't tell you how many times I've read this text and this passage. And it doesn't matter how many times you've preached out of it. I've told you often and I'll tell you again, this book is an inexhaustible resource. It's a deep well. You fall off into it and you're liable to drown. I mean, brother, this thing, it, it always gives you water when you lower your bucket down into it. 1 Samuel in chapter number 1, we'll begin reading in verse 27 this morning. 1 Samuel 1 and the next to the last verse of the chapter. Hannah is talking to the Lord, and she says in verse 27, or she's talking to Eli, in verse 27 she says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore also have I, notice this word, lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth he shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. Look at chapter number 2 and verse number 20. Chapter 2 and verse number 20. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for, notice these words, the loan. Speaking of Samuel. For the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went unto their own home. Here in our text we find the story of one of the mightiest prophets that God ever gifted to the nation of Israel. He is the namesake of First and Second Samuel. His name is Samuel. And this woman prays and begs God, Lord, give me a son. That's the way the book starts out. She comes to the house of God and yearly she is begging God, Lord, please Give me the desire of my heart. And let me say this, just because God hasn't answered the prayer that you're praying about doesn't mean he's not gonna. God many times doesn't work on our timetable. God doesn't work in our time schedule. But I know this, when God does come through, God's timing is always right. Yeah. There are so many things that I've prayed about and asked God for through my life. And Brother Bill, the truth is when I look back and I, and I see how I wanted it done, had God gave it to me when I asked for it or had God done it just like I wanted it, man, I'd be in a mess right now. And I'm so glad that God answers prayer not according to my will but according to his will. Not according to my time but according to his time. And here we find Hannah is finally getting what she's begged God for. We find that she has longed for this child. Oh, she, in chapter 1, prays to the point that tears come out her eyes. She prays to the point that, that Eli even thinks she's a drunk woman because her lips are moving, but her, her, there's no words coming out. I don't know if you've ever been there in such earnestness of prayer where you got plugged in so deep in prayer that, man, you was talking with God, but nothing was coming out. It was just, uh, it was just tears, and it was just emotion, but there was no utterable. Uh, word that could be mentioned but I'm glad God hears what we can hear. I'm glad when somebody's down an altar, somebody's in a prayer closet and all they can say is oh God, oh God I'm glad God knows what them prayers are about this morning 
We find she longed for this child, and we find she loves this child. The Bible said when God gave, gives her this child, she takes him home and weans the child, loves on this child. This, this is what she's longed for. This is what she loves. God just gives me a man child, and God does it. And there's no doubt. There's no doubt that there's never been a mama that could have loved a child any more than Hannah loved this child. This child is her life. I mean, brother, it's everything she's wanted. It's everything she's desired. Her love's wrapped up in him. Her longing prayers are wrapped up in him. Her life is wrapped up in this child. And what I want to show you is here in the text, we find that in spite of how much she loves him and in in spite of how much she longed for him and in spite of how much this child is her life, we find that she loans him to the Lord. And one of the greatest prophets that ever lives comes from the woman who gave him back to God. I want to preach this morning for a few minutes on this thought. A loan that made a prophet. A loan that made a prophet. You say, preacher, I don't got anything I can give God that's going to make a P-R-O-P-H-E-T. No, but everybody in here has got something they can give God that will turn into a spiritual P-R-O-F-I-T this morning. Everybody's got something you can give God, and I don't know what it is, whether that's your family or whether that's just you or whatever. Everybody's got something they can loan to the Lord, and God can take the little bit that you give to Him, and God can make a whole lot of it down the road somewhere. I'm sure Hannah never dreamed when she gave that little fella to the Lord, he was going to turn into the big fella that he turned into. I'm sure when she handed him off to Eli, she thought, well, he's just a snotty nose squirt run. He ain't going to make much but down the road somewhere she said man look what God did with the little bit I gave him I find that God specializes in a little bit a little is much when God is in it this morning you say I ain't got a lot to give God I don't got a lot of intellect I don't got a lot of life left I don't got a lot of smarts I don't got a lot of ability I don't got a lot of money I don't got a lot of you might not have a lot but the little bit you got God wants it this morning I find out God can do a lot more with a little bit than I can do with a lot this morning. If you'll just loan what you got to the Lord, the Lord will make a profit out of it, friend. I find, I find a lot of people in this life, and, and there's nothing wrong with preparing and planning for the future. Uh, it, it, uh, the stock market's real big, and people loan and invest in the stock market, and that's, that's, what, that's what investing is. It's basically just loaning. You take what's yours, and you loan them your money, and they take your money and use things with it, but they make it grow, and they make a profit out of it, and I don't claim to know a lot about this. I know just enough that would probably get me in trouble. If I decide to put some retirement money in something like that, I'm going to need somebody to direct me so I don't wind up penniless and broke. Say amen right there. But uh, I, I know this much. I know that there are, there are, there are certain stocks that you can put your money in and all many people are looking for in certain stocks and certain loans and certain investments is short term profit, short term gain. In other words, it's, it's risky and you could lose it all but there's a chance that you get something back real quick and make a lot out of a little bit. They're called short term investments. It's short term loan. You put a little bit of money on something that's a little bit iffy or risky but you're hoping to get a big boom on your money. The safe stuff and there's men and women in this room this morning that's got this and there's smart. They're wise with their money. The safe stuff is you put your money in a stock that's a long-term investment. It's a long-term loan. You're not looking to pull anything out now. The reward and the benefits down the road somewhere. And and over time, it yields much more than the short-term ever could. It it yields much more than just a quick, short loan or investment could. They don't got the here and now in mind. They've got the down the road, the long game, way off out there in mind somewhere that way down the road when it's time to retire. They're getting down to where they're not working anymore. They can make a draw off of that. Can I say I find that same principle this morning in life when it comes to serving God and living life. There's a whole lot of people, even Christians this morning, you are loaning your life and investing your life in the short term gain. You're only looking right now in what's going to give me some return right now, some joy right now, some fun right now. So you invest 
your whole life into this world and into your friends and into entertainment and into your flesh. But you listen to me. There's pleasure in sin just for a season. And the season always runs out. And so many people are investing everything, loaning their whole life to the world, the flesh, and the devil. And the devil says, look at the return on your investment. Yeah, it looks good right here and right now. But you realize investing in this world, I'm talking about living your life for the world. It's just going to burn up one day. The Bible said the elements one day is going to melt with a fervent heat. But there's some of us that we're wise this morning. And we've got our eyes set on heavenly things and got our eyes set on another world. And I'm not interested in living my life for this life. Uh, I'm not talking about investing money. I'm talking about investing your life this morning. I'm talking about loaning everything you are or everything you hope to be in God's kingdom and God's economy. And I find investing in God's kingdom, it's not short-term gains. It's not short returns. It's the long gain in mind. Uh, at one of these days when we step out of this world uh, and step off on that side, we'll look back and say, I sure am glad I loaned my life to the Lord. I didn't keep my hands on it, but I let God do something with my life this morning. No one ever loaned their life to the Lord without making a profit on it. Everybody that ever loans their life to this world winds up with nothing in the end. That's what Jesus said, Brother Zeke. Jesus said, they that will seek to, gain, if you seek to gain your life, you lose it. But if you'll lose your life for my sake in the Gospels, you'll find it. He said, everybody wants to try and get something now. But Jesus said, if you serve me, it's not about now. It's about out yonder somewhere. No one that ever lived for, life, lived for God didn't end up with a profit for it. I'm not saying it's not without struggle. I'm not saying it's not without pain. There is no such life this morning. Let me say this. A Christian life that doesn't have pain is a Christian life that doesn't have profit. A Christian life that never has any suffering and never has any pain is a Christian life that is of no value to the glory of God and the kingdom of God this morning. But I find everyone that ended up investing in God's economy, loaning their life like Hannah did into God's economy, wound up with a profit. Old Noah invested his life in preaching righteousness, uh, and there was a prophet. He got him and his family onto the ark when everybody else got wiped out. I find that Abraham invested his life in the world work of God and, and said I'm going to strike out looking for a city that has foundations whose builder and maker is God and you know what God told Abraham I love what God told Abraham brother Cliff God come to Abraham uh, in Genesis 15 and he said Abraham I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward this morning he said Abraham I'm the greatest prophet you got Abraham I'm the greatest thing you got in this life I'll be your reward whether you see any reward down here or not Joseph lived for God and God caused him to have a prophet. Uh, we find uh, that Moses lived for God and God caused him to prophet. We find that David lived for God. We find that Paul lived for God and John lived for God. Let me give a personal testimony. I've never regretted a day in my life living for Jesus and walking with God. I've seen, I'm not just seeing gains out yonder. I'm seeing God do stuff in my life now that makes it worth it to live for Jesus here and now this morning this is God's bank how about you make a loan to God this morning you say oh you want us to write a check you want us no 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 I ain't talking about money this morning I'm using it as a word picture get your mind off money when I'm saying loan and investment I'm talking about investing in eternal things in the work of God this is God's bank how about you make a loan this morning everybody comes to church and they say, oh, God, do this for me. Oh, I need this from God. I need that from God. How about you show up to church this morning instead of getting something from God? How about you give God something? How about you quit coming every Sunday and expecting God to give you something? And how about you show up and give him something because of what he's already given to you? How about this morning you just get on an altar and say, Lord, I'm not looking to get anything from you. I'm looking to give you my life and give you my home and give you my family and give you my friends. And God, I'm not just going to give it to you. I'm going to start walking with you and living for you and serving you. I want to make a loan that will create a profit this morning. I want to show you several things about Hannah's loan and we'll be done. 
several things about Hannah's loan and we'll be through. Number one, we find that Hannah's loan was a sacrificial loan. Hannah's loan is a loan of sacrifice. Look at the sacrifice that she makes. Look at verse number 24 of chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse number 24, watch Hannah's sacrifice. The Bible said, and when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in shallow and the child was young. They slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, Oh, my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I'm the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord for this child. I prayed, and the Lord had given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth. He shall be lent to the Lord. Here we find it's a sacrificial loan. Let me say this about her loan of sacrifice. She sacrificed her wants and her will. Hannah sacrificed her own wants and her own will. This morning, Brother Travis, I'm sure Hannah, the Bible says she took him home and weaned him till he had grown up enough to where he didn't have to nurse anymore, till he got old enough he could do and live on his own. A little, but he's still just a little fella. He's young, the Bible says. I don't know how old he was, four, five, six years old. But she brings him to the temple. And I imagine in her mind, Brother John, she's got desires for Samuel's life. I imagine she had wants for his life. I imagine she thought, man, this is what I prayed for, what I longed for, what I love. I'm going to do with him what I want to do with him. This is, this is mine. And that's the problem with a lot of people. They look at like everything like it's theirs. This is mine, and I'm going to do with him what I want to do with him. But we find her sacrifice was this. She sacrificed her will for his way. She sacrificed what she wanted for what God wanted this morning. And you want to know something? That's the problem with a lot of Christians. Listen to me. This is the problem with a lot of Christians. We're real good Christians. Boy, I'm telling you, we're church going, tithe, and live for Jesus Christians until... God does something we don't like. And then we're not nearly as good a Christians as we claim to be. I am happy with the Lord, and I'm all in on Jesus, as long as Jesus is doing everything I want him to do. But as soon as Jesus requires something out of my life, or as soon as the Lord expects something out of my life, or as soon as someone's preaching, I don't like it in my life, I don't know about all that. That's not real love. Real love is I love you, Lord, regardless of what you ask or want this morning. That's like children. That's like children. I've raised four children. I'm still in the process of raising four children. That's like children. I've watched some children, they only love their parents as long as their parents do everything they want. They only love their parents as long as their parents are on their side and do anything and everything they want them to do. I love you. But as soon as that parent steps across the line and says, no, you ain't doing that, and you ain't having that, and you ain't going there, and you ain't hanging out with them, you ain't listening to that, and you ain't wearing that, then all of a sudden you find out deep that love really runs. No, it turns from love to rebellion. And many parents are just happy to, well, I just won't cross them. That way they keep loving me. That's not real love. Real love has sacrifice involved. I will give up something for you because I love you this morning. And here we find uh, uh, that this woman says, Lord, I'm not, I'm, I, I don't want you to do my way. I want to do it your way. God, what do you want out of my life? I know this hurts. And Lord, I know this is tough. And I know I may be picked on and ridiculed about it. But God, if this is what you want, if He's what you desire. I am willing to sacrifice it for your glory this morning. Amen. Do you realize this? God is not concerned with what you want. God is concerned with his way because his way makes a profit. You know what doing things your way is going to get? It's going to get you a zero. But if you'll do things God's way, it'll end up with a profit in your life and in your family's life. I find this, I find that Eli's way, Eli's way, oh Eli here, he didn't make a prophet. He raised two fellows named Hophni and Phinehas. You know something interesting about Eli, Brother Keith? What's interesting about Eli is, a lot of people's like this, well I bring them to church, I got them at church. There's more to it than just getting them in a pew. Eli raises his children in the house of God. They're around it all their life, but they turn out to be heathens. Because there's no practical outworking of everything they've heard at the house of God back at home. 
we find Panana. Panana is the other wife uh, of Hannah's husband, Elkanah. Now, I know that's some messed up stuff, but it's in the Old Testament. The Bible said in times of that ignorance, God winked at it. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. But Panana, the other wife, she's got all kind of kids. Not one of them turns out to be a prophet. Her way don't work. Eli's way don't work. I tell you what way does work. God's way always works. God's way always creates a prophet this morning, but it requires sacrifice on our part. We all about God, give me something, give me something, until what God's got to give us requires us to sacrifice to get it this morning. Boy, I was thinking afresh and anew about 1 Kings over there, chapter 17 or 18. And Elijah, brother, uh, uh, goes to the widow of Zarephath, uh, brother Jason. And the Bible said when he gets to the widow of Zarephath in the middle of that big famine, the Bible says she ain't got nothing but two sticks she's rubbing together. And she got just a little meal in the bottom of her barrel. And she got just a few drops of oil, brother Donald, in that cruise. Uh, and Elijah walks right up and says, hey, I'll tell you what you do with that. You go in there and instead of making that for you and your boy you make it for me and watch what God does now I'm telling you that's a sacrifice right there that's a sacrifice to say I'll take the last cake that I'm going to make for my son and I'm going to feed your big old mouth with it that's that's a big sacrifice but she said you know what I need to sacrifice something to God if I'm going to see God provide and see God make a profit you know what she done she sacrificed her own reasoning she sacrificed her own wants she sacrificed her own will and you know what happened God made the barrel of meal where it never did run out God made the cruise oil where it never got to the bottom and every day that she walked back over that barrel and that cruise of oil I bet she said thank you Lord that I didn't do things my way look at the profit of loaning things to God look at the profit of giving God everything this morning She had just enough meal for one more meal than the widow and her son would die. But that prophet of God said, bake it for me and your barrel won't ever run dry. There was a great multitude, but not enough food. Just one little boy's fish and bread. But the Lord, he took it and he blessed it that day. And the whole multitude got fed. And God will never run out of blessings. There is an abundant supply. Oh, whatever I need, whenever I need it, my God will provide. Yes, my God will provide. But it requires sacrifice this morning. It requires, God, I'm proving to you that I love you more than just lips. I'm willing to sacrifice something to show you how much I love you. It's Abraham in in Genesis 22. Abraham, offer up thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. And Abraham did so. The Bible said when Abraham had that knife stretched out about to jab it in that boy's chest, the the angel of the Lord called to uh, Abraham out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, do the lad no harm, for now I know thou fearest God. Now I know you really love me, Abraham, not because you just said so, but your sacrifice proved it. See, not only, I got to hurry here, her loan is not only a sacrificial loan. We see she sacrificed her wants and her will. But please don't miss this. Don't miss this. Please, if you miss everything else, do not miss this part of the message. She not only sacrificed her will, but she sacrificed what was already God's. She, Brother Jimmy, she was only sacrificing what already belonged to God. Look what your Bible said in chapter 1. Watch her original... Her original prayer, her original vow, chapter 1, verse 11. Watch verse 11 in her prayer. Watch verse 11, chapter 1, verse 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou would indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord. All the days of his life there shall come no razor upon his head. Did you notice what she said? Did you notice how this goes? She says this, Brother Gary. If you will loan him to me, I'll turn around and loan him back to you. In other words, Brother Danny, she is realizing this. 
I'm not giving anything to God that he did not already give me first. I am only loaning to God that which he has already blessed me with. You know what the problem is with many of us this morning? We think what we got's ours. But let me just give you a news update. Your breath ain't yours. He holds it in his hand. Your body ain't yours. What? No, you're not. But your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which you have of God. And you're not your own. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's this morning. Your family ain't yours. God gave them to you. Your house ain't yours. God gave it to you. Your job ain't yours. God gave it to you. Your money ain't yours. God gave it to you. The car you ride in to get here ain't yours. God gave it to you. And somehow we get to the place where we beg God for all these blessings and God loans them to us. And then when God loans them to us and then we beg God, God give us, God give us. And God says, okay, here you go. Then God says, okay, give it back, give it back. And we say, uh uh-uh. This is mine. No, it's not yours, sister. It's not yours, brother. It's God's. These are my kids. Sorry, they're not. God gave them to you in their own loan from him, and he's going to hold you accountable for how you raised them. That's my car, preacher. No, it's God's car, and he's going to hold you accountable for where you drove it to. Where you been driving God's car to, by the way? Where you, where you been parking God's car at? Go, you been parking God's car at some places where Jesus Christ would be ashamed to be at? I'm just curious, that money you got and that cash in your pocket ain't yours, it's God's. I'm just curious, how you been spending God's money? Surely to goodness, surely to goodness and surely to God, you ain't been spending God's money on liquor in your refrigerator. No, surely, surely to goodness not. You ain't, you ain't been spending God's money on Bud Dumber and, and, and Miller Low Life and sticking it in your refrigerator paying it for with God's money. Amen. Surely to goodness, surely to goodness this morning you ain't wearing stolen shoes and stole, wearing a stolen dress, wearing a stolen suit and tie and riding a stolen car because you stole it with God's money that you should have tithed with. Thief, thief, thief. Your problem is you think it's yours. I'll do what I want to with my body. My body, my choice. No, it's God's body and it's his choice. And you're going to answer to God for what you've done. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know why some of y'all don't understand what I'm preaching? Because you think what you got's his. It ain't it, what you think what you got's yours, I mean. It's not yours. It's all his. And he has divinely, providentially blessed you with it this morning. He has allowed you to come in possession of it. And you can take God's stuff and loan it to the world and the flesh and the devil if you want to. Or you can take your stuff that God already gave you and loan it back to him and say, God, I ain't got much. But everything I got, it's all yours. Take it, bless and use it for the glory of God this morning. I mean, you know, we we all skittish about loaning people stuff. You know why we're skittish about loaning people stuff? Because we've had them burn us, Brother Mike. <laughs> you loan know, somebody a tool, they don't bring it back. I'm nervous about loaning my books out. If I loan you a book, it must be because I like you. <laughs> Some people got precious things. Some people, their tools is precious. Some people, their you know, clothes is precious. Whatever. Well, books is precious to me. If I loan you a book, it's because I believe you're going to give it back to me. I loaned you a book, Brother Robbie. You brought it back. I appreciate it. I've had to hunt some books down before. Any of y'all got a book you borrowed from me and you ain't bringing it back? I wish you'd bring it back. I love my books. Praise God. You ought to thank God I love books or I wouldn't give you nothing Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Thursday night. Amen. Amen. A preacher don't read ain't worth listening to. But this morning, I mean, if I, we real skittish about loaning money. You know why? <laughs> Scared me ain't going to get it back. But I mean, I'm just curious this morning. If I asked somebody in here and said, man, I, I mean, I, what, I need $100. Would somebody loan me $100 this morning? Would somebody loan me $100? Miss Vicki, you want to give me $100? Praise God. <laughs> Y'all don't know Miss Vicki. Uh, Destiny's like, dear God, she never give me a $100 bill. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Miss Vicki. Praise God. 
They didn't even fight. <laughs> now, some of y'all sitting in here, and you know what you're thinking in your mind? That's sorry, good for nothing, rotten rascals, fitting to take $100 from a widow woman. <laughs> yeah, I am. You know why I got it from her, and you know why she gave it to me so readily? Because when she come down out of the choir, I handed it to her, and I said, Now, Miss Vicky, when I asked for that $100, I want you to give it back to me. Now, y'all know something about this? Listen to me. Miss Vicky wouldn't have been right with God nor me if when I asked for that $100 just then, she just sat there and be like, I don't know about $100. No. You know why she gave this back to me, and it ain't even really mine? Who, who Tristan Bart? Who? Who? My mama gave Charity $100 the other day. It's actually my daughter's. I, I've loaned it as well. That's yours, baby. Praise God. That was birthday money from her grandmother. You know why she gave it back to me? She realizes it's not mine. Right. I, 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 I didn't earn it. I didn't, he just gave it to me. And he asks for it back, so I'm going to give it back. Because it's not mine. And this morning, that's the way it is in your life. Everything you've got, that's the way God gave it to you. He handed it all in your possession, and then all he says is this. Give it back to me. I'll do more with it than you will. You say, why don't God just keep it in the beginning? Because he wants to know if you love him or not. There's, I told you there's no real love without sacrifice. You don't know if somebody loves you unless they're willing to sacrifice. And you have not proved your love to God if you are not willing to give up something for him this morning. The loan that made a profit, we see it's a sacrificial loan. I got to hurry. It's not just a sacrificial loan. It's a satisfying loan. It's a satisfying loan. I got a lot to say, but I'm going to get it said here real quick. But I didn't preach last Sunday, so you're going to be all right, okay? <laughs> it's a satisfying loan. It was satisfying because she silenced her enemy. Look at her enemy. Watch chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Watch her enemy. It was, it was a satisfying loan because this loan silenced what the enemy was saying to her. Look at verse 6 of chapter 1. Her adversary, this is talking about Penina, her sister wife. Best way I know how to say that. That's a messed up situation. Her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Penina has been harassing her. Brother Kevin, Penina keeps saying to her, Elkin, I don't love you. He loves me. And God don't love you. God loves me. And, and you're worth nothing and you're good for nothing because you ain't got nothing. And then I'm sure this, I'm sure when she got this boy and then turns around and loans him back to the Lord, Brother John, I imagine Penina then says, you a fool. You are a fool. You prayed and begged God for it. Now you got it. Now you got rid of it. You are a fool. And let me say this to every mom and daddy. Let me, let me, let me just kind of, for just a second, swap gears about our children this morning, mom and daddy. Swap gears about our children. The devil will say the same thing to you if you give your youngins to God. Shield your kids from some things. Push your kids toward other things. The devil will say the same thing and the world will put such heat and pressure on you to the point where you feel like you're going to cave in. The, the devil will whisper and the world will whisper stuff like this in your ear if you give your loan to God. Push him to live for God and serve the Lord. The world will say things like this. They're missing out. Oh, they are missing out. Missing out. My kids ain't missing out on hearing, amen, critical race theory garbage. My kids ain't missing out on hearing a bunch of LGBTQ drag queen garbage. I don't want my kids hearing that trash. They ain't miss, they, your kids are missing out on prom night. Missing out on prom night so they, so they can get half naked and get out there where everybody else is drinking and fornicating and dress down and show everybody my, the bodies of my daughters. You've lost your mind. That's all right. I got a little tight. That's okay. That's what the world will say to you. Hannah, all you do is take that boy to church. That's what, he, that's what she done. 
Brother Carl, all she does is take him to church. Hannah, all you do is take that boy to church. Take that boy to church. You're going to mess him up, Hannah. He won't have no social skills. He won't know how to communicate with people. He won't, he won't have no social skills, Hannah. He won't know how to fellowship with people. Blah, 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 stinking blah this morning. Child of God, tune out everything that the devil in the world saying, and you just keep loaning your family to God, loaning your children to God, loaning your walk with God, and watch God put to silence the voice of those that would make fun of what you do with your children. It's a satisfying loan because she silenced her enemy. It's a satisfying loan because she saw God's plan. She saw God's plan. Watch what she sees. Go to chapter 3 with me. Look at chapter 3. I love this. Watch God's plan. She sees it come to pass. Chapter 3, verse number 19. Chapter 3, verse 19. Check it out. Don't miss this. This is great. Chapter 3, verse 19. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan even to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. Look at chapter 4 verse 1. Chapter 4 verse 1. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. I'm telling you brother, you want to know one of the most blessed verses of that King James Bible? It may not mean much to you, but it's a blessing to me. It's in chapter 2 and verse number 19. Every mama in here ought to appreciate this verse. Chapter 2 verse 19. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Brother Cope, I think to myself, it says she brought it every year, so every year she had to make it a little bigger. Brother Mark, every year she had, wonder how big he's got this year. Wonder what God's doing in his life now. I wonder how much he's grown in grace and his walk with the Lord and in his stature. You want to talk about how satisfying this was when she'd come to the temple and all of a sudden her and Penina walk in the temple and it's Samuel who stands up to read the word of God. Hey, hey Penina. Called me crazy, didn't you? Said I was a fool, didn't you? Said I was nuts, didn't you? Think it's nuts to have a loan from the Lord. Yeah, you're the one sitting there listening to him preach now. Check, check this out. It's a loan that makes a profit this morning. I mean, it don't just make a profit of God. It makes a profit with God this morning. I'm telling you this morning, it's satisfying. If you'll just give what you got to God, young people, if you'll just give what you got to God, mom and daddy, somewhere down the road, you'll see God take it, bless it, and use it, and you say, thank God, I gave it all to the Lord this morning. It's a satisfying loan. It's a sacrificial loan, lastly. It's a secured loan. It's a secured loan. Some of y'all know what secured loans and such as are. But her loan's a secure one. Why is her loan a secure loan? Listen to me, I'm done now. I'm fixing to close her down. Why is her loan a secure loan? It is secure because of the person she loaned it to. (laughs) It's secure because who the loan holder is. The one who she's loaned it into the hands of this morning. You say, Brother Josh, you say, who did she loan it to? Oh, verse number 28 of chapter 1, this is what she says. She says, therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. She did not loan this boy to Eli. She did not loan this boy to Hophni or Phineas. She said, I'm giving him to God. Lord, I'm dropping him off in your lap. I'm telling you, it's always a secure loan when you give what you got to God. It is always a super secure loan when you give, no matter how old or how young you are, when you say, God, here's my life. I'm giving it into your hand. I'm going to walk by your word. I'm going to live by your standard. I'm going to walk in your ways. It is always secure to give God everything you've got this morning. It always pays off in profit. I have loaned and invested in certain people, and it didn't pay off. But I have never loaned anything to God 
that I regret. It's secure when you loan it to him. See, not only it's a secure loan because of the person she loaned it to, it's a secure loan because of a promise that's coming. What's the promise that is coming? Do you realize there's a promise about Samuel that ain't been fulfilled yet? It's on the way. Go to Psalm 99 and we're done. Psalm 99. Psalm chapter 99 is a chapter dealing with the 1,000 year reign of Christ on planet earth. You folk in here know prophecy and Bible preaching. You know that Jesus Christ is coming to rapture the church out. There will be seven years of great tribulation. And at the end of that great tribulation, Jesus Christ in Revelation 19 is coming back on a white horse to set up his kingdom on earth to rule and reign for 1,000 literal years on planet earth. Yeah. And this is a chapter about that. Watch verse 1. Psalm 99.1. The Lord reigneth. He ain't reigning now, but he's going to. Let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion. He's high above the people. We ain't going to read all of it, but come all the way down to verse number 6. Watch what's going to happen. We'll start in verse 5. Watch what's going to happen in the millennial reign of Christ. Exalt ye the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests. And look who else is going to be there. And Samuel... Among them that call upon his name. One of these days, somewhere out there in the future, Brother Kent, Jesus Christ is going to be sitting on his throne, ruling and reigning. All the nations, Brother Hosthauser of the world, has to come and worship before him. And when they walk into that rebuilt temple that Ezekiel talked about in Ezekiel chapter 40 through 48, and they walk into that wonderful complex, better than Solomon's temple, and they see Jesus sitting on the throne of his glory in between two great big cherubims, there'll be Moses and there'll be Aaron and ministry before him but you know who's going to be standing out yonder in the courtyard according to that giving God glory and telling people how good God is you got it right Hannah's boy's going to be there Hannah's boy's Hannah's boy's going to be standing there and giving Jesus some glory and I got to think to myself brother Keith the woman that loaned him the woman that gave him going to be standing somewhere outside saying glory to God glory to God I'm glad I loaned it I'm glad I gave him all. He's up in there now with Jesus. Look at what God's done. Now some of y'all sit here and you say, but that ain't got nothing to do with me. Yes, it does. Because how you live for Jesus Christ now determines what kind of reward you get in that same millennial kingdom. How you live for Jesus now determines how the reward will be divvied out when he rules and reigns. Can you imagine how happy she'll be? But can you imagine how happy we'll be to be able to rule and reign with Christ and say it was worth it to let the world go. It was worth it to let some people go. It was worth it to walk with God. And look what God did with all of don't loan, don't loan for the short term prophet this morning. Esther, help me. Do not loan some of y'all this morning. You are loaning to the short term just as hard as you can. And you're going to get a return on your investment. But it's going to be right here and right now. But this morning, why don't you hit an altar and say, Lord, maybe you bring your whole family. Say, all of this, it's all because of you. I'd still be lost and going to hell. I'd still be a drunk, still be a dope addict, still be sitting in my religious pew, lost without God and going to hell. Lord, this is all yours. You saved me, called me, put me in your family. Lord, I want to do my best to give you back everything you deserve maybe this morning there's a sacrifice God expects from your life that you've been neglecting to give him won't you let God have it it's all he is anyways turn around and hand it back to him the loan that made a profit this morning let's all stand father now I tried my best to preach what you put on my heart Lord, in the midnight hours last night, I couldn't hardly sleep because you kept speaking to me on this message and putting things in my heart and in my mind. Been so looking forward to giving it to God's people today. Lord, I pray that you'd sear this into our heart and into our conscience 
Help us just to loan you everything. No reservations, no hold back. Give it all to you. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need to come, you come, Sister Saint.